Hi, this is M, and this is a companion video to a Press Power video that I'll also be posting about the same time. Uh, again, this is October 3rd, and I thought I'd turn the camera on while I'm pressing uh, probably pretty much the last time this season. So I brought a few more in, and I thought we'd go over those. Uh, and so if this sounds like something you're interested in, then let's get started. Let's just start with... Hydrangea. I've done hydrangea before, so I won't show too, uh, talk about it too much. But as you can see, hydrangea, um, as it gets later in the season, they start to dry. These are start to get a little bit dry. You can actually dry hydrangeas by taking the heads and putting them in uh, in water and letting them dry naturally and using them for dried arrangements. A lot of people will do that. And also for pressing, typically I don't press the whole clump because the, it's so thick. And this one isn't even the whole head. I just pressed one stem off of the whole head. What I typically do, and again, everybody should experiment and press things the way that they think that they uh, would like for their own work and how they use it. For me, I typically will simply... Um, I will snip them off the back and I press the individual florets and I typically press them face down. They're very easy to press. They hold their color well and these are still, they're later in the season so you kind of have to look a little closer at them to get petals that are, yeah, petals that are, um, you know, that are not all blemished, blemished yet. But if you have any hydrangeas that are still on your bush, they're, they're certainly worth taking a look at. On this one, what's cool about them is, depending upon what color your hydrangeas is, and as a lot of you that grow them know, that um, acid soil, they turn more blue, and alkaline, they turn more pink, so I'm in acid soil. But these, uh, if you can find a nice, nice pretty one, have this neat purplish color. Look at how pretty that is. And so... Depending upon what colors you want to press, bring this up closer to the camera. But look how beautiful that is. And these will hold their color for a super long time. So it's worth picking hydrangeas at different times of the year because of how they, uh, they change over the season. The next thing I want to talk about is hydrangeas are perennial at least in my area, and so this bush comes back year after year. This is a zinnia, and there's a lot of different kinds out in the garden. I just brought this in, for example, because I like the, the, the two-tone of the petals. They're super thick. I don't, I don't press the whole thing, but what I do do is I will take them out of their sheath, like this, to individual petals, and then I press the in individual pieces. And I typically lay them down like that so that the book rolls over them. And then they, they work good uh, for petal art or let's say, for example, you've got uh, a flower that, let's say this is pressed, then you can use them as accents behind or behind leaves. So there's a lot of things that you can do with just petals. And so that's what I'll be doing with his. I do save the zinnia seed. And here is an example of one that's dried enough that when you get down into them, here's your seeds. Bring this up to the camera. Let's see, here's your, here's your seeds. So that's what I do with the zinnia. I'll get another piece of paper over here. This is a form of a marguerite daisy. Here's how they grow on the on the plant. I wanted to show you the leaves. And these centers, uh, what I do, if you want to know if something can be pressed whole or not, I will typically just hold it in my hand and press the center and see how much give that they have. And these will press flat. They, they are soft enough that you can take them off the back and you can press them flat. I typically press them flat face down. And with enough pressure, I usually use the equivalent of two cement blocks, uh, they will do, do fine. And these, again, will hold their color reasonably well. In the last video, I showed you Bidden. That was this one, remember? In the, the companion video I talked about. 
but I didn't show you the seeds that, that I do collect. And here's a seed pod just right for collecting. See how it's starting to explode? And there's the seeds right there. And, and those will start real easy from seed. Um, let's see what else we have. Oh, um, my art, uh, Dusty Miller is doing really good. I like to get the upper leaves that are the most silver. And a lot of times the back of the leaves are even more silver than the top, which is what I like to use. And they have kind of a, they're kind of thick, but they press really good. So if you want something with a little bit more texture, this is Dusty Miller. They're, uh, some places say that they're annual, but for me, a lot of times, depending upon the winter, that this is, came back from, from the year before. And actually, it might be on its third year. So it, it can be perennial here in this area. So I'll be pressing some of these today. This, uh, what else? Oh, here's a, I don't know what kind of fern it is, but I really like it. And it does good either in an entire frond or using the individual pieces in, in miniature arrangements. So I had a few of these fresh fronds that were coming up, so I thought I'd better go ahead and press them before they, they start looking bad. Here's a bedding plant. I don't know what the name of it is. My hus this is a holdover from the year before of my, in my husband's side of the yard. I brought in a piece so you could see, but you can find them at the garden centers, and they're easy to grow, and they press well, hold their color reasonably good. And they're small, so they're nice for the, the uh, more dainty work. So those are pretty cool. And then, what else? Did I, oh, I'd love it if somebody knows. I put a call out here in one of my videos probably a year or so ago asking someone what something was, and they told me it was an epimedium. Thank you very much, whoever that was. And so I'm wondering if someone can tell me what this is. This I started, I don't know, she's probably 15, 20 years ago from a four-inch plot. This is a smaller version. The leaves can get quite large. But this is the leaf. It grows from, I don't know what it is. I'm hoping someone does. It grows from a basil clump. And then the flower spike, and I'll show you the flower spike, it grows up tall. They're probably about two or three feet, two and a half, three feet tall, and they grow from the basil clumps. Perennial, like I said, it's been in my garden forever. I don't know what it is. I call it the wild one just so that I know what, I'm, what it is when I'm thinking about it. And that's, they, they press really well. I typically just do the florets, but if I'm feeling lazy, I'll take the whole thing off. I'm going to need scissors. I will uh, cut the whole thing off, strip down some of them so they're not as many, and then I will press them kind of like that. But here's, here's how it goes. Okay. If anybody knows what this is, I'd love, I'd love to find out. <laughs> I've been wondering for years, and I have no idea what it is. Clueless. Then here's uh, something else I'm going to press today. These are, a lot of you are probably familiar with the regular ladies' mantle, that they get the larger leaves and then the little... Um, flower stems yellow they're little yellow star-shaped flowers that come up but there's also a uh, an alpine variant and a dwarf and this is the dwarf right here but what I like about these here's the front but look at the back and I don't know if the camera can capture it clean that off See how it's it's like silk. It's like little fibers of silk. It's and they shine. It's they're gorgeous. So I typically use the back. I'm I'm in love with these. But when you use the front, and again I don't know if the camera will pick it up, but the around the edges a lot of times it'll have that little silver, silver look. 
And then here's the alpine. That's the alpine. It's got these reddish stems. Now, again, depending upon the season and where they're at, they can be nice and green like this, or they will start to get a little bit more burgundy. They'll burgundy up. And so you can get different, uh, different color variants of these leaves. But these are really good for small work. And I'll either press the, the clump. What I'll typically do with these, these I'll lay generally face down. These I will lay this way so that when the book rolls over them, it will roll them flat like that. Roll them out so that they kind of lay like that after they're pressed. Or sometimes I will do smaller pieces and then take them off individually. Like if I have a bunch of flowers on a page and I just need something small to fill in the spaces between the flowers, I'll, I'll take them off and then I'll, I'll roll the book over them that way. So this is Dwarf Ladies Mantle, Ampharms Lady Mantle. I'm pretty sure I talked about that before. Uh, oh, then also, for some reason, my Larkspur are, uh, are still coming on. I have a heck of a time growing or finding seed for what I call double Larkspur. And I don't have a single Larkspur here because I try not to grow them. But, excuse me for bumping the camera, what I call double Larkspur is when they have kind of more than one round, a round row of petals. See, it's you've got petals back here, you've got petals here, then you've got petals up front. So there is, it's not just one layer of petals. And then there's, there's a lot of different colors. And I typically <clears throat> find my scissors. I just snip the, I usually press them open face, snip, snip. And again, I, I know I've showed this in a past video. So, um, and then I just typically press them face down. And then the buds, like a bud formation like this, I will just, I fan them out. Buds, I tend to fan out a little bit, especially if they can be fanned out, add a little bit more excitement to them. And then, and then I will press them like that. I keep bumping the camera, sorry. And so that's kind of how I do Larkspur. Every once in a while, I'll press a clump in a cluster like this. And if I do, if I want these to be more open face, I'll press them this way so that when the book rolls over them, it'll kind of roll them like, like that. And then I have these blue ones. I'm going to try, I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to try to save some seeds. I didn't bring any seed clusters in to show you what the seeds look like because A, they're not mature yet, and B, I've noticed that for all the spikes of larkspur that I have, and I left some on the on the stem so that they'd go to seed, but the actual seed pods forming are nowhere equal to the number of flowers that I left on the stem, if that makes sense. So, so if I left, let's say, these many flowers, what I'm finding is that I'm lucky to get a seed pod out of them. So they're not, <clears throat> they're not being as prolific in their seed pod making as I thought that they would be. So I'm going to have to covet <laughs> them. And then it doesn't, doesn't really um, help that the deer seem to like the larkspur and uh, and so the ones that might have had seed pods, they've been coming and munching on them. So I don't know what I'll get. But I am going to try to save some seeds because I do have some double ones that I finally finally got growing. And uh, I'd like to try to grow some more next year for my own seeds if I can get any. So Larkspur hold their color really well. They're typically an annual. They don't like to be transplanted, so they are best grown from seed. So if you can find seeds in your garden center or order them online, uh, that's the best way to grow larkspur. And like I say, there's their double, what they call the double, and then just the regular ones. And then the one I saved for last that I'm going to talk about, this is new this year uh, for me. It's called Twinkle Flocks. And I 
I had to search and I fa searched the web high and low and I really had a hard time finding them. They're called Twinkle Flocks, but I did find someone that had them. Um, I think I got them at the, not, not, not this spring, but last fall, I found the seeds. But they did, they did come up. I was able to germinate some and they come in a lot of different colors. Oh no, this is the second last thing I'm going to talk about. They come in a lot of different colors, but you can see. Oh, let me get some of the ones I have. Bring them up to the camera. Get my tweezers. Where is it? Here. Okay. So here's how they grow on the bush. And typically I will pull them out of their sheath like that. Especially early in the season when, when they're just getting started. And then, and then once they get started, like I have a lot of these in the yard right now, so then I'll start picking the clump and then doing the clump in a, in a profile. But look at how beautiful they are. They're, and they come in so many different colors. And I didn't know, it was just a seed packet of multiple, you know, multiple colors, so I had no idea what I was getting. And here's a pink. Look at how beautiful this one is. Let's see here. I think this is another pink, a little different color shade. See, see how this one has that kind of whitish towards the center there, whereas this one's more solidly. Well, it's got a little darker pink center. And then this was in the same pack. It, it looks different than these other ones, but this was in the in the mixed twinkle pack. And then this is even different still. And this one, which is different than this one. So, and then I had some other ones. The deer like these too. So, uh, I went out today to pick some of these for pressing today, and the deer had gotten some of my more favorite colors, actually. And then here I want I want to save the seed. And here's here's a seed pod my first, the first one I was able to, to get, and I, so I haven't tried opening one yet. You take one that looks more mature and see how, I imagine these are super small seeds. Let's see if I can get into there. Hopefully there's some seeds in there. So, that's, yeah, I think that's a seed right there, right here. I think that's a seed. So we'll we'll see. <laughs> we'll see how that works out. And then the last thing I'm going to talk about, and I may have showed you this before, is Pintus. I have a. This is the only one that I grow inside because it will not overwinter. And again, they're, they're not as easy to find. And I really like them, hold their color well. These I, th these I think will probably hold their color reasonably well too. They kind of remind me of a, um, a Vibrina in a way, but I know garden, regular garden flocks I've pressed before and they held their color pretty well. So I'm anticipating the same thing for these. But this is Pintus and I just, Clip them off the back, and then they they hold their color well, and then they are are that nice star shape, and I press them face down. Same thing here. When I have enough to have a cluster, if I want to press them individually, I will just clip them, snip, snip them from the back. Let's say like that. And then I, again, these I typically will press face down. All right, so that's kind of what I'm doing today, but I want these things with you. I think that's all I, that I had. Yep, okay, so that'll be it. Those two companion videos, look for those if it's something that you're interested in. And as always, thank you for tuning in. And those of you who subscribe, I really appreciate it. And you have a wonderful day. Gotta undo the camera from the holder so that I can shut it off. <laughs>